Welcome back into my kitchen. It's a July afternoon and except for a business call today I don't have anything to do. It is great. I love this time of year in France. What I'm going to tell you is that I'm going to try a completely new recipe, a French recipe today for flan de courgette. And I have watched several times a recent video for comment fait-on. And I will put that information in the low bar, but again, as you know, as I always say, I will not edit or provide links to any of my videos, let alone the cooking ones. If need be, I will add parts two, part three, and so on. And you can refer to the channel Really, I cannot recommend it for people who do not understand fluent French French because he does not slow down. It's like working with a French chef back when I was a chef's assistant in Paris. You know, you better understand it. And they give a lot of tips and he suggests um, substitutions and temperatures and in, in not in Fahrenheit and quantities not in what, for example, Americans know. So, you I mean, you can look at the clip, but I don't know how much of it you're going to understand. Okay, so what's going to happen here is first, there will be some onion, and it's going to be peeled and diced pretty fine, and heated maybe in this little pot, but probably in a, in a bigger one. The cocotte is in the dishwasher, and I'm going to clean this sink and run the dishwasher shortly because I'm kind of lost without my cocotte, the, the Dutch oven. I have these nice tops of spring onions, and these are going to have to be picked through, and see, I'll see what I can salvage. I've got a lot more of these, and I actually have still spring onions left, too. And you can also use some leeks with this. And these will be sautéed in a little bit of olive oil, which I didn't put out here. But I have some butter softening, unsalted butter. Oh, this is some yellow pepper of the seeds. I, I like to plant them. I just try not to touch them if I have any cream on my hands or anything. And uh, because they're not sterile. They, they will grow. They do grow. I get peppers at home that way. And I'm going to heat the onion and this nice picked through green onion of the spring onion and oh where is it where is my little friend oh here he is a very small courgette and I kind of need more by the way the small zucchini which are called courgettes in a lot of the world or zucchini in Italy uh, are the best. They have the most flavor and they're the least mushy. So try to get these, but you can definitely do this with a bigger one. Since I don't have much and I don't know how it's going to work out, I have a mild, very pretty orange and yellow and green pepper, which is getting near to the point of being overripe, so I'm going to try to use it. And these are going to be sautéed in some kind of pot until they're fairly well cooked. And then there will be some eggs. And I always let eggs go to room temperature. And really good eggs, which are organic free range that you pay a lot, you know, for over here. But these are uh, la boule rouge. These are not bad. But the really good ones, you never refrigerate, and you keep them in a special wooden box or at least a proper egg carton. Uh, refrigerating them just kills them, kills the flavor. This is called Maizena, and this is a very popular French kitchen staple. You know, everybody really has this. And it isn't so much cornstarch as it is some other things 
This is kind of a funny mixture and I've learned to use it to make bechamel sauce and lots of different things. I'm looking for the ingredients on here. It must be here somewhere. Well, you can just think of this as cornstarch, you know. This is just a French thing, okay? It says gluten-free. All right, that's nice. And that's yeah, kind of weird. It says fleur de maïs, so I don't know what's in it. I thought there was a little something extra, but I could be wrong. Okay. And actually, it's very nice added a little bit in cakes. Uh, kind of cheating, but they recommend it, and I've tried it. And while these are sautéing these first items with some parsley or, um, what do you call it, uh, that, that other green stuff. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, the words are, uh, are escaping me. It's not coriander. It's it's the coriander plant, but I forget what they call the 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 green thing. You can use that, and it should be fresh. And I do have a little bit of the fresh green thing. I can't remember the name of, so I will get some from outside. And but I'm going to use some dried parsley, which is less good, but eh, you know, and. This will be done with, uh, he recommends six eggs, but he's using a lot of zucchini, and I'm going to use maybe just four. And again, I will probably put in this pepper. He recommends salt, and I'm again going to use this fleur de sel de Camargue, which has some black summer truffles in it and some black pepper and a French cooking secret is nutmeg and the fresh that you grate yourself is the best actually quatre piece is is a staple in France it's clove cinnamon nutmeg and pepper and I seem to be out of it but anyway the guy says use a little bit of this it works for everything. Mashed potatoes, chicken soup, a lot of things, and any gratin. The eggs will be... This is very low-tech. The only thing I need is a knife, really, and a wire whisk. This does not stand up well to a mixer or a food processor. This is going to be sliced thin but not too thin. He showed how you can just do it with a knife. And after the onions and stuff have gotten transparent, uh, you've got your eggs whipped. Oh, and he does use milk. Okay. See, I have goat milk and cow milk. I don't really like cow milk, but this is almost gone. I have more goat milk if I need it. Nice goat milk. I like horse milk, too. I drink that for health. And there's going to be, I'm going to hand grate some of this cheese in my hand grater. Let's get this down. Ugh. Yep. See, this is a new recipe for me, so it's helping me to assemble what I'm going to need. And I've got the clip to refer to when I, you know, forget the order of things. And he folds in the eggs with parsley and nutmeg and I think he adds the parsley to the eggs. Yeah, I think he does. And the cornstarch and it's beaten very well with the wire whisk with a little bit of this salt and I'm also going to add in the cooking phase in the pot some Ras Al Hanout Jaune which I really like a lot uh, this is a North African spice and it's curcuma, coriander, cumin, ginger which he recommends, he recommends ginger for this anyway uh, nutmeg uh, clove, black pepper, a little sugar actually, salt, and starch. 
You usually see the brown, stronger stuff. I like the yellow. It's very subtle. And it will be folded together with the grated cheese and cooked what they call vamari. See, this is going to be buttered. I've got the butter softening at room temperature. It's warm in here. It's going to be buttered. And this will have oh, about an inch of water in it. And this will go here. And this will bake in the oven. I think you said 220 degrees Celsius. I'm going to have to check that. And 200, 220 for about an hour. And then you take it out. And when a knife comes out, when you test it, and it's, you know, it's clean, it's done, turn it off, let it cool, and you have to refrigerate it at least 12 hours. Then, the next day, you can unmold it and slice it, and it's lovely. If I've forgotten anything, I will put it in the low bar. Okay, thanks for your patience. I hope this works out. My spouse is sick. He's having vertigo again. He's legally deaf in the right ear now from his job, and it's causing uh, some problems. Okay, bye.